bomb buckler. Hey everybody, it's Robert Dunn from arttop10.com and I'm really excited to be here today with the artist Peter Monkman at the Lightbox in Woking and he's got this amazing show here. So uh, Peter, just tell us a little bit about this, this wild thing. Well, what can I say about myself? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> apart, be, Being a teacher doesn't sound so glamorous, but being a teacher and artist is, is okay, I think. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yes. this is an accumulation of my journey over the last 15 years or so of, of making portraits looking at sort of young people, hierarchy within a school system, and then finding a way of putting it all together to pose questions for us all to look at and think about. Okay. And so, so what kicked off the idea to do this? I mean, you, you won the BP Portrait Award, didn't you? Yes, 2009. Yeah. I mean, that was um, 10 years ago. Yeah. And it feels like as if I've had to do quite a lot in between to keep yeah, myself yeah. active, to think, keep thinking about the very things I was involved in Absolutely. with... Uh, the, the BP Portrait Award. Oh. So, I mean, you're teaching, you've got people around you every day. Yeah. So like any portrait artist, it's like, what, what, who do you use? Yeah, I didn't exactly. want to use commissions. Yeah. I wanted to just use the people around me. So yeah. the discipline of then sort of taking a cross-section from the school itself and yeah, looking exactly. at who the head boy and head girl are, yeah. why are they there, um, <laughs> how, how, do we, how do we depict them, yeah. How do we sort of represent them sort of sensitively with a sense of hope, but also a sense of them being constructed by the institution? Okay. And, and then again, constructed by the artist as well. Well, absolutely. Yeah, you've thrown your own absolutely. dangerous element into it somewhere. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so, when you start, so when you did the first portrait of the head boy and the head girl, did you know it was going to expand into this sort of massive project? No, I mean, the first one I did was for the Watts Gallery show in, in, okay. in 2006, um, seven, okay. and I included a head boy and head girl in that. I'd just okay. come from a state school, okay. and I produced a series of works based on state school kids. Okay. Um, I, coming from the northeast, I came from very much that background, yeah. and I was really interested in how we construct images of adolescents. Okay. It's a difficult area to deal with yeah, yeah. because they're, they're always shifting and changing and there's, there's a, it's a political dimension to it, yeah. to, to yeah. race, gender, identity. Always interesting area for artists to deal with. Yeah. But to be privileged within a school environment and to be privileged to be able to teach these individuals as well is, is all part of my agenda. Oh, so in a way, you've got, you've got to know all of the people you painted to a degree. To a degree, yeah. but... It also questions how much do we really know, even yeah. our own sons and daughters. I think yeah, yeah. You, there has to be an element in portraiture of ambiguity yeah. to allow, to not pretend that you are capturing someone's deep soul, because I think that's a bit arrogant. Yeah. I think all a portrait painter can do, really, is to get a sense of an image, an interpretation <laughs> that other people can sort of project onto. A commissioned portrait is a little bit different, however, because yeah. you are pandering to a particular audience or a particular client who, who wants things depicting in a certain way. So I'm really interested in that side of things so, as well. So people, out of the students you've painted, the ones you knew better, would you say the portraits are different to the ones you knew less well? I think that one of the earlier ones I did, which really got the so whole thing rolling, it? yes, the, um, so the pioneers it? over here, yeah, okay. where I've got Two of my students here, who personally, I'm, I mean, this is, for me, this is one of my favourites in many okay. ways, because I felt it, it's brought together two students who are art students. Okay. Um, they didn't go on to do art at college, but they did art with me at, at school, okay. and um, they were very happy to be part of this project, and I know both of them dealt with portraiture in their own works. So they learnt okay. a lot from it. I learnt a lot from doing it. And I felt as if I could play, play around with these ideas with them. Because okay. we're expecting students to experiment and, and play around with ideas in art. So why shouldn't their teachers? So Absolutely. there's an element of me exploring representation. I'd been looking at Rodchenko's work of these, these striving Soviet sort of young <laughs> workers. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to construct an image which showed that as aspiration and hope for the okay. future within the institution. Um, but but very much coming from me, the artist, and not coming from the institution. Sure, sure. That sounds really cool. So, so this was the first 
the first one of the, the lot, really? I think, for me, it's the first successful one. The earlier ones that we saw over here from 2007, if we start, yeah, yeah. if we come over here, um, Head Boy and Head Girl, and then yeah. within that, I've, I've included uh, a, an anonymous student from a, my previous school, which was a comprehensive school in Northamptonshire. And I've, I've put them together in the same row. She's yeah. taken it in a, a bit cheekily centre center stage, and the spotlight <laughs> is on her. She's splitting the headboard and, head and, and she's And she's amalgamated, if you like, into something which is non-hierarchical, They've all been painted the same way, and all you're left with is slight sort of hints at the symbols and semiotics of how they wear their tie and jewellery and, and their expression. But again, it's, a, it's an expression that just happened on, for the moment of painting the portrait. It's not actually who they are or what they are. It's, it's, yeah. it's us that, like August Sander did when he categorised lots of German individuals, it's a, almost like a social commentary yeah. more than anything else. Interesting. And so this, was, so this was 2007, that was predating the other one. Yes, but I, I hadn't had in mind that I was necessarily going to do the series then. So there's a, there was a bit, of, bit of a gap. Yeah. And then this is where it really kicked off in 2011. And then where did it go after that? Well, if we, if we trace the trajectory... Yeah. 2007, so these are the 2012 ones. Absolutely, right? yes. Just kept yeah. on wood, kept fairly plain and straightforward. 2014. 14. So we've got 2014 and 2015. Oh, it's, it's two, two very, they, they look very similar, but I yeah. did them in separate years. Okay. And again, I wanted to take that whole the construction of, a, of almost like a boardroom painting of young, young people as if they were sort of yeah. given some sort of status and the colour helps back their, back their cause, if you like. But it's also... Hmm. It, it, so the, why, why the yellow? The yellow kind of... Complements, I think, the blues and the pinks within the world. Oh, of course, absolutely. So, from a formalist point of view, it's quite useful, but it also has a slight sort of. I always think a bright yellow has political connotations as well, okay. sometimes, but okay. as well as being striking and, and draws people into a show. But it, it can, just like all colours that you see, the coloured badges, the coloured ties, well, they all have badges, they, they all have references. Yeah. Whereas yellow is a is a contradictory colour to all of those. Yeah. Uh, so, Pete, so this is 2016 and 2017. Correct, well. yes. And you've moved on from the yellow background to like a pink background. In a way, I mean, it sounds a little bit cheesy, but it's, <laughs> I quite liked to shift and change the yeah. colour because yeah. with a view that when they're to be all seen together, it, it sort of gives some sort of difference. So, and, and also, when you paint particular individuals, it, it feels like a certain colour lends itself to a particular... Sure. So the first one I painted here, I think the two students, they have a very kind of, very sort of beautiful, glossy, sort of per perfect ties and well-presented young men, man and woman. Sure. I felt needed something kind of t to soften that. So a pink okay. is okay. a nice, neutral yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of... Slightly gendered colour, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it sort of pulls the composition together. And it it's also references the school colours as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so by this point, you were thinking of them as a larger Absolutely. series yeah. of pictures to be brought together in this room yeah. in one day. Uh, in one day, absolutely. <laughs> and so on this, this one, she's got quite a, a look on her, this one, the eyes. Is that... Yes, I mean, the way, the way I create these images... Are, I call them images, interestingly, and yeah, not yeah, portraits, yeah. because fundamentally they are. Um, there's always a negotiation with the young people. I, okay. I, there's a bit of photography goes on, and we discuss which images work. Okay. So for me and, and for them, the kind of sideways glance and the kind of yeah. knowing look get provided a contrast and a difference to the okay. other glances and, and, and views that we've got from the other portraits. So you actually discussed with them how they were going to look before it... To, to, a degree, to a degree. Yeah. Um, I think the good thing with photography and sharing it with on your iPad or computer is you, you can actually see very clearly the different poses, the different yeah. lightings, the different expressions. And if really there is a, a look or an expression that isn't liked, then you would not use it just yeah. out yeah. of respect yeah. to them, really. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So from 2017, where did we... Do we do 2018? Yes, 2018 is over here. 
and then oh, yeah, and then the the uh, mashup abstracted the yes is over there yes yeah so this is 2018 oh so you still had a kind of pink but this time it's, it's bursting through the background absolutely like a sort of yeah lava explosion absolutely i mean <laughs> i mean for me at this point um is experimenting with different grounds and uh, as a painter yeah. the, the difference between just a straightforward portrait painter who's trying to work to a commission and someone who's experimenting with painting, okay. I think there's a big gap. Absolutely. So I was getting a bit restless with the kind of the muscle memory and the kind of repetition of the things I'm always falling back on. I thought, right, by starting off with a bright pink ground, something I'd never do, mm. and then working backwards into the grey, it would perhaps create a challenge for me. So Absolutely, the, yeah. this is a painting that was done relatively quickly, mm. wet in wet. Oh, and there's a sense of that, that movement and, and playing against that colourful background. So, I mean, wet and wet things are nightmare. Yeah. When you do it, Absolutely. It? Yeah, it just creates complete chaos the whole time. Absolutely. But then something comes together and you've got to know when to stop. Yeah. Leaving that yeah, shoe. Leaving that bit at the back. You know, just a, a gesture of paint going down the body or in the face. I suppose the face is have had a bit more tentative treatment because in the end that's where the eye goes, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And you sense you need, to, um, you need to give them a bit of credit because you are painting individuals after yeah. all and you want the personality to come through to an extent. Exactly, exactly. Yes. And so from there on we've gone, I think from now on we head to 2019 Absolutely. and uh, the crazy double-headed experience. This is uh, why things change. <laughs> Again, you can probably sense me trying to break away from my... Yeah. my kind of cliches and tropes of what my portraiture is, okay, having yeah. won the BP Portrait Award and, and people kind of expecting a certain sort of work, Absolutely. you deliberately want to go against yeah, that. Yeah, of course. So I went on a great course at the Slade, a summer school, and they, they taught me about, or not taught me, but I found for myself that I should be pushing around paint in a different way. Okay. So this portrait was me sort of thinking, right, let's try and move the two faces together and abstract, but okay. still create an essence of the individuals within there. So, so that so, was a quite a tricky thing to do. So you thought it was the paint that pushed you to change it? Yes, because the, the, the image or the photograph that you're working from tries to bully you into doing things in a certain way. Okay. But then as soon as you use oil paint, which is a physical substance, and move it around, it's, it's trying to sort of counteract that a little Absolutely. bit. So you've got to, I've got to learn to allow that to happen. Absolutely. Um, because it makes for a more interesting painting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't oh. necessarily make for a better portrait, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it yeah. makes for a better painting. Yeah which yeah. is a quite an interesting kind of tension to have, which kind of leads it nicely to the, um, yeah. the smaller so pieces these are, here. These are cracking. I love these little if you ones. just take it a bit closer, you'll probably be able to see yeah. the, the, the working on a... Interestingly, working on a small scale ha has a big effect um, because it draws an audience in and, and, and it loosened me up a bit and, and because the actual paint does not soak into the ground, it slips around nicely on the, on the okay. copper. So the copper has just had a, a simple sort of, sort of um, sanding down and, and roughing up of the texture so, so that the paint so sits actually, on it. So it actually forced you even more than before to the paint to have a larger control in what took place. Yes, so the paint had to have an element of a life of its own. Yeah. But it's still that tension between keeping the likeness yeah. But then allowing the mark to sort of dominate, create something else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm totally fascinated from all those Ken Kiff films now about that paint. And if you let the paint have more control, then you get a much more interesting result. Absolutely. I think I'm discovering that more and more. Mm. The thing is, when you've been teaching in a school a long time, there is very much that sort of idea of illusion, trying to get kids to of course, draw yeah. and paint objectively and from observation. But then... It's, it's allowing other things to happen which are a yeah. little bit more risky. And yeah. if you're not careful as a teacher, you just fall back onto those safe zones. So it's tricking yourself into doing something differently. Different. And meeting people, you know, artists like yourself yeah. and within the broader network is, is good because it, yeah. it makes you challenge. Yeah. No. All right, I, mean, I think it's absolutely fascinating. Are there any other key pictures you'd like to pick out? Well, it's interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll select these. Um, yeah, these ones, I, the ones on wood. The, the ones on wood. And in a funny sort of way, these are a synergy between 
my practice as a teacher, also teaching a little bit of art history, and, and then wanting to try something for myself. So at the time, there was a student of mine who was really making great progress, and she was painting in pretty much a similar way to me. Okay. So I, okay. I pinched her idea of, paint, of painting on wood. <laughs> and um, it also, I quite like that sort of the, the very kind of official side profile portrait. Oh, yeah, the, the, very, the, very controlled, the very controlled sort of mm. element of portraiture there, but then mixing it all up. And then you've got the double head. Like yes, where the, but where the grain of the wood becomes part of the, the actual oh, the yeah, portrait. The and, and it comes through the portrait as well. Because some of the double head ones, like the etching one over here, is it etching? Or is it a yes, it's a small etching, yes. Small etching. I actually think it's quite frightening. Really? Sorry, sorry, sorry. You know I what? Find there's, there's, I find there's, this one quite disturbing, this one. It's like a sort of strange um, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. But that's really interesting. It, but for me, it's the medium that's doing it, isn't it? It's Absolutely. that very strong light yeah. and dark. It's copper etching. Mm. I wanted to make a little copper etching with the help of my colleagues at school. Um, based on some of these etchings over here, which are paint, oh, okay. and, and they've got, it's got a very different quality. It's got, I mean, that one's, because they're, they're, on this one, for me, they're merged together in some kind of yes. hideous human amalgamation of sort of creatures <laughs> staggering through the corridor. <laughs> I, I think I blame the medium for that. It wasn't intentional. <laughs> <laughs> but then you've got something very different something happening like that, here, exactly. which, has got, which has got a kind of a, a Madonna-like, but it's also yeah. got a feeling of being a 1960s Jimi Hendrix poster. It's got, it's got much more poppy, poppy pop, art. A pop feel, art so. feel, yes. Yeah. And very much, you know, using similar images... Mm. Again, with the painting, these are the same students. Oh, and how the medium, mm. the medium detects how someone looks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think that's, that's what people have to get over with portraiture. Portraiture is not always about likeness. It's about an artist's struggle with a medium. Mm. Um, and in a, in a way, that's kind of what I'm interested in. Mm. Although they're very different styles, yes. it's me yeah. struggling through and trying new things out, really. So this is what this show is all about. Yeah. So, so it's absolutely fascinating, actually. I love you talking about the medium. I love you talking about how they work it and how almost you're not really doing portraits. They just happen to be what you're fighting absolutely. with on the medium itself. But so, so once you saw it all up, what yeah. did you feel? Well, I'm mean, really proud because um, they've been sitting in my studio for such a long time. <laughs> I think they needed to have a conversation with each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And just the very fact it's brought, brought an audience yeah. together. Yeah. I've had some really interesting com conversations about you know, identity, young people, schools, yeah. the medium. Yeah. Um, and it's almost been a therapeutic Okay. thing for me. I'm, I'm able to reflect and relook at what I've done and think about where I should be going next. Yeah. So more head boy, head girl? Or are you going to... Well, you know what? I'll give it a break. <laughs> <laughs> you really? But so. then, yeah. you know, some of the, the bands say that and they always come back, <laughs> don't they? <'Cause> they... <laughs> well, Pete, I've absolutely loved it. I think Thank it's you. Thank you. Show. And um, it's really interesting to see. I mean, rarely get to see such a breadth of pictures from a long period of time that are keeping a sort of focus on the same idea as you go through. So Thank it's you. absolutely fascinating to see that. I've loved Thank it. you very much. Cheers, Pete. Thank you. Bomb buckler.